Welcome back. This is part two of our Unity tutorial on how to make an iPhone game. As always, I am your host, Karma Crazy. Where we last left off, we had created a stand-in in part one of our video. We had also set up a few um, scenes, and we made sure to import our assets package so we're all on the same page. All right, so as you can see, we have our stand-in made in our, um, in our tap control setup scene. So now what we need to do is we actually need to le hold left click on stand in, drag this over to our prefabs folder and let go. As you can see that creates a stand in prefab. Now we can click stand in in the hierarchy and hit delete and that deletes it from the scene. All right, so that's all the work we're going to do right now in tap control setup. Now we are going to be working in the camera control setup. So if you go to control setup, make sure your folder is dragged down. Um, we're going to be working in the camera relative setup. Um, because we're going to be making the joysticks. So if you double click camera relative setup, it's going to ask you to save your tap controls setup. So go ahead and hit save. And now we're in camera relative. And to know this, you can see up in the top left, Unity, camera relative setup dot Unity, Unity PC and Mac standalone. So that lets you know you're in the right scene. And all we have is a main camera and a plane. It's also a good way to indicate what scene we're in. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create the controls object. And to do that, we are going to start with our um, joysticks. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new game object. Go to create ga game object, create empty. We're going to left click game object and call this controls. Hit enter. We're going to make sure that this has a position, let's say about 111 with no rotation and a scale, scale of 111. All right, and now what we're going to do, this is the parent game object that we have created here. So now we need to hold our individual joysticks. So we're going to create empty. We're going to left click on it. It's called game object, not controls. I clicked on the wrong one. <laughs> click game object, call this one left pad, hit enter. Cre create empty. And now we're going to click on game object, right pad. So now we have created the left and the right pad here and we're just going to take the left pad pad drag it into controls take the right pad pad and drag it into controls all right now that we've done that we are going to create a gui texture controls obviously is the parent game object here and our left pad and our right pad are the children so now with the left pad, we are going to add a GUI texture component. And with left pad selected, make sure it's highlighted in blue. You're going to go to component, then you're going to go down to rendering, and then you're going to go to GUI texture. And that's going to add a GUI texture right here. So now we are going to add our texture to it. So if you look in your project panel, you should see a folder called textures. Click on that, Draw, um, click in the little uh, carrot to drop it down. Um, you'll see textures and you'll see a folder called GUI and then you'll see thumb test. Click back on the left pad. Um, now you can hold left click on thumb test, drag it over to texture and as you see you get a little plus and it highlights. You just drop it right in there and now as you can see it created something in the scene but don't worry about that yet. We're gonna edit this texture. So now we need to go to color. So click once on color and make sure that it's at 127, 127, 127. I know we're only one off, but you know, it's all good. And make sure that you have a 45% opacity. Now we're gonna go to pixel insert and make sure to drop it down so you can get X, Y, width, and height. For X, it's going to be 30. Just tab down to Y, that's gonna be 30 as well. Then your width is gonna be 100, your height is gonna be 100, and hit enter. Now left border, right border, top border, bottom border should all be zero. So that, we are done um, editing the width and the height and all that good stuff here on the pixel insert. So we can drag that right back up there. All right, so before moving to the right pad, we need to set the scale of left pad's transformation to zero, zero, one. So in left pad scale, we need to make sure it's zero on X, zero on Y, and then one on Z. We only had to change two of the numbers there, but that's all good. All right, so now we can go to the right pad. So we're gonna click right pad, and as you see, it does not have 
a GUI texture to it. So we need to go into component rendering GUI texture. Now we have that one. So we're going to do thumb test again. Just hold left click on thumb test, drag it into texture where it says none. Make sure it's got a little plus there. All right, so we're going to set the color to the same. So we're just going to drop one value on this 127, 127, 127. We're going to hit. And now we're going to make sure pixel insert is down. And we're going to set X to 355. We're going to set Y to 30. And we need to make sure the width and the height are both 100, 100, 100. And all the remaining values should be zero. So same as last time. All right, so we're going to scale it just like we scaled the left pad. And if you don't know what that was, we can go into left pad and see 0, 0, 1. And we need to do the same thing here, 0, 0, 1. Now comes the fun part. Time to make scripts. Hooray! Coding is uh, essential in all types of game design. Uh, but in Unity, coding is somewhat easier uh, because you can have multiple languages and things like that. So basically we're going to be creating a script, uh, obviously to have a movable joystick that's going to handle touch input, taps and phases. Dead zones can control where the joystick input gets picked up and can be normalized. Alright, so we're going to create a new script named joystick.js. So as you see we have a folder here that's empty called scripts. What we're going to do is we're going to actually go into the hierarchy. Well no, let's go ahead and do it in the project. Um, go to create and we are going to we are going to create JavaScript then we're going to call this joystick.js so to open this with whatever script editor you want um, I did not I don't want to be using Visual Studio just because it's resource heavy um, I don't. You, when you double click it, it might just open Unity's um, script editor, which that's what I want to use because I'm pretty sure that's what everybody's going to have. So go to Edit, uh, Preferences, External Tools, External Script Editor. Um, you can do Mono Develop, which is built in, and just close out of that. So now when we double click it, it should launch the default Unity script editor. Let's cross our fingers and hope that it hopes that it does. And this is what should pop up when you do that. So we've got, now we can write our code and this is where everybody should be now. Um, if your preferences are different and you want to use a different editor, you're more than welcome to. That's one of the beauties of Unity is they allow you to develop in several different um, you know, script editors. But I'm gonna use the default one just so everybody's kind of on the same page here. First thing that we're gonna do is delete all that is there so it is it is blank so this will be added to the right and left pad game objects it's going to rely on the existence of the GUI texture components since the GUI texture is required we want to add at script require component parentheses GUI texture parentheses and I'll write that out at lovely script and why did I capitalize that? Script require components. GUI texture. All right. So with that in place, we will cache our GUI texture component for the script so that we can reference it later. We need to add a private variable named GUI of type GUI texture to the script and create a start function. In the start function, set GUI to component GUI texture. All right, so now we can hit enter. Say hit enter twice just for, uh, you know, purposes to make it uh, easier to read. So now we are going to cache our GUI texture component. 
So we're gonna add a private variable named GUI of type GUI texture to the script and create a start function in the start function set GUI component GUI texture. And how we do that is we would do private VAR GUI GUI texture. Make sure that your um, your text is sensitive. Um, GUI texture, GUI is capitalized, the T is capitalized, capitalized. function start, capital S, start parentheses, in parentheses, start bracket, and do GUI equals get components, parentheses, space, GUI, capital, capital T, texture, and now we're gonna in brackets. All right, so far so good. Programming again is not my favorite, but you know, it, it can be done. All right, so when we use get component to get a component in the update function of a script, Unity has to look at that component one or more times per frame. To save time and cache, to save time we're gonna cache the lookup. We declare a private variable at the top of our script and do the lookup only in the start function. We have our GUI texture, so let's make it follow our finger around the screen. We're going to create an update function so that we can check for touch events and update GUI.pixelInset each frame, which is what places the GUI on screen. So we're going to do that by adding in another area here we're going to do right under our function here we should probably change the bracket though or actually go inside the bracket we're going to do default capital R E C T equals G U I dot pixel capital I for inset colon. and we got that there so that's good we can put another space just to get that bracket down we need to iterate over all touches and check whether that touches position falls within the bounds of the GUI texture to do that we use input dot touch count to give us the number of touches and input dot get touch to get a specific touch. If we find that a touch is within a GUI texture bounds, then we can set the GUI to the new position. Now we're going to do an update function. So we're just going to do this right under the bracket there. Function capital U for update, parentheses, parentheses, and we're going to put the bracket on the next line. And we're going to do VAR C account equals capital I for input dot touch count colon four parentheses VAR I INT equals zero I count I plus plus in parentheses and do another bracket VAR touch touch equals input touch equals input dot get touch parentheses I in parentheses if GUI dot hit cap capital H capital T for test and sees touch dot position and parentheses and parentheses and close brackets. All right, how we do that? I th oh no wait we're still missing some here. Um, after we close the bracket, we have to add something under this. 
GUI dot pixel in set dot x equals touch dot position dot x and then GUI dot pixel inset dot y equals touch dot position dot y. Let me see, we got a bracket. I think I, that bracket goes, parentheses, parentheses, that bracket goes, ah, no. I did not mean to bring that parentheses down. I meant to do a bracket there. And then after this, we've got one bracket, another bracket, and one more. And that should be it. So we should hit File, Save. Everything should turn green here. All right, so now after we've saved, we're going to add it to the left pad so that we can test it out. Now that we got that, we can go ahead and close out of the Actually, just hit quit, file quit. We can close out of the developer. So now we can add this to our left joypad. So we're going to take this, we're going to drop down controls, and we got left pad here. We're going to take and drag onto left pad. I need to convert error. I have script errors. Hooray. Let's go find out what our script errors are. Okay, I figured out what's going on. Um, because when you load in the standard assets in mobile, if you go to scripts, um, this comes preloaded with our joystick script, so this is basically one that uh, you can actually load in. But because we're trying to learn Unity, we're not going to use it. So what we can do is we can actually just click on that and we can hit delete. And now it is out of our scripts. So we should be able to attach this to left pad now. Still issues? Alright, let's get in there and find out what's going on. All right, after a few minutes here of playing around with it, I think this whole scripts folder is causing a stupid error. So what we need to do is if you have standard assets mobile and you have scripts, go ahead and just delete that. And hopefully that's it, because our, our code is giving no error. I'm just wondering, the only errors I see are in... Cannot add... All right, so we have another scripts folder that is giving us problems. If in standard assets, you're going to see scripts. Delete that. I'm not quite sure what is going on here, but let's find out if that did it. Oh, there we go. It finally worked. <laughs> All right, so now we have our scripts attached to our left joypad. Our joystick script is on our left pad, so that is good times. Um, if you have the Unity remote for your iPod, iPad, or iPhone, you can actually hit the play button, and with Unity remote, you can test out what we've just created. Um, because I'm recording my screen, I can't show you guys that, but we're going to have to edit the script because there are things that we have to do to improve this and make this better. So check that out in part three of my I Unity, making an iPhone game in Unity tutorial series. Make sure to click the like button. Make sure to subscribe. Click anywhere on the screen right now to subscribe. Also, make sure to share this with your friends, and please post your comments below if you have any questions or anything. Um, please leave them in the comments. You can also... Uh, Tweet to me uh, at Karma Crazy Games on Twitter. All right, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you in part three. Please subscribe.